Howdy folks and welcome back to another episode of Tyria Talk. My name is Richie and this show is all about the astonishing upcoming MMO, Guild Wars 2. This is episode number 35 and today I'm going to be talking about single server technology. That's the best I can really think about it. Actually, for a large part of this episode, I actually haven't planned what I'm going to be talking about. I just thought of this topic a little while ago, and I just wanted to ramble about something. So if this is a little bit incoherent, I apologize. But before I get to today's topic, I wanted to let everybody know that there is indeed another stress event that has been uh, announced today. The stress event will take place Thursday, August 9th. And it will run from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time, the same time as last time. So it's another four-hour window that people can get into the game and do expect there to be problems. They're going to be testing out certain things. And like last time, you might have trouble logging in or you might get kicked out. Don't get frustrated by it. That's what this is for. So let's talk about today's topic. So I was thinking about all of the things, all of the innovations that ArenaNet has put into Guild Wars 2 to kind of make... Uh, make the servers seem a little bit more seamless. Uh, make it almost seem like that they don't even need servers. Like, for example, uh, you know, you, you can go into an overflow server, right? Um, and if there's a, if the area that you're in is too crowded, you will go into this overflow server. And these overflow servers actually can be groups of people from all different servers. I've met people, I met somebody online who recognized the name of my character and, uh, he, he was like, aren't you supposed to be on Dark Haven? And I was like, yeah, I was on Dark Haven and, and and they're like they're, they were on a different server, but yet we were able to play together in the overflow server. So, so in that regard, you know, the server doesn't really matter. And then you can guest. There's the ability to actually take your character and and be a guest on a different server. So really, it kind of, you know, it, it blends the servers together there. And there was a whole bunch of other things like um, the the economy is isn't server based. It's 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 world based, right? It's it's the entire uh, it's the entire region will share. The, the the auction house, the marketplace, and uh, the prices for certain, the going prices for certain things like the gems to gold or the gold to gems, that's not going to be based on your single server. That's going to be, I think it's your region. I don't think it's worldwide, but I think it's your region. So again, another that's another thing that they've they've implemented that is like cross server or really you know doesn't doesn't mean anything to be on a single server. The uh, queuing up for uh, structured PVP is, is similar as well. It's not just your server that does that. And then that goes into the whole whole thing where your name in Guild Wars 2 is unique across all servers. Uh, you know, you're not if I choose if I choose the name, I don't know. Bunny Fluff the Destroyer. I'm not going to just have Bunny Fluff the Destroyer on that server. That's going to be nobody else on any of the other servers. I think it might be region based too. I'm not I'm not exactly sure on that. But uh, no one else can be Bunny Fluff the Destroyer if I take it first. So don't you go for it. That's mine. My name. I'm Bunny Fluff. All right. Maybe that name will still be up for grabs post launch. But you can check that out and see. You bunny fluff lovers. Anyway, so and and also guild names, right? Your guild name is going to be unique across servers as well. The little tag, you can actually have the same tag as other uh, other guilds, but the the guild name has to be unique. So I was thinking about all of these things that they put into the game, and it really looks like they were going for a serverless type model, right? With the game, like you know, you don't even need servers anymore. We've been waiting for this to happen in a, in an MMO. So we're used to we're used to the idea of servers from other games, but it does complicate things. You gotta kind of figure out like where are all your friends gonna be. What happens if someone rolls on a different server? You know, you have to worry about server transfers. You know, maybe even having to pay for server transfers. You have to coordinate with different groups of people and try to make sure you're on the same server. Now in Guild Wars 2, it's a little bit less stringent because you can actually guest on other servers. But at the same time, it looks like they were putting a lot of things in place to kind of eliminate the whole server thing. And then it got me thinking, like, well, why don't they just get rid of the whole idea of servers? Because it would just be so convenient just to be able to play with anyone. And, of course, if there's too many people in one area, you know, you, you can you can set it into districts like they did with Guild Wars 1 or do some other creative way of, of making it so you can play with the people that you want to and find the people that you want to, but still make it kind of like a, a seamless transition. And then, and then, you know, you get to thinking about world versus world, right? Now, world versus world is very server dependent and it's pretty much the only thing I can think of in Guild Wars 2 that actually requires them there to be separate servers because everything else that they've designed seems to seems to want 
they're not to be servers. So I wonder almost if they were trying to figure out a way for world versus world to actually work in a serverless environment, maybe some way to split up the population into teams and and uh, s some way to, to match make them without servers. And, I, 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 and part of me even thinks that they probably had to go with the server model because they wanted world versus world to work the way it does. Now, in a vacuum, world versus world with the three server, you know, um, structure works really, really well. I think that's going to be a, a really big draw for people. And I think that they, they put so much effort into world versus world and not many games have this type of, um, open world kind of, uh, PVP. Well, I don't know if you call it open world, but you, you get the idea. These mass scale o o o PVP combat that takes place over a two week period. Some other games have things that are similar, but this, this is really a, a huge scale. And I think that's going to be such a draw to people and such a, uh, such a, such a focus for a lot of people that it's, it's a, it's a big selling point for Guild Wars 2. So I almost wonder if, they were going down this serverless route with all these innovations, and then they had got stuck with world versus world and went, huh, we can't make that wor work in a server serverless environment. So we'll make servers. And sure, you can still have all these other things that make it more seamless and cross-server different things, but for world versus world, we really need that to, to, to function. And, uh, you know, I've tried racking my brain earlier today trying to think of a way. Can you get World vs. World to work without servers? Because it would be kind of neat to have just this serverless game. And I, I couldn't think of anything that was that was overly compelling. It really is cleaner. It's a more elegant design choice to have this. Uh, I just thought it was I thought it was an interesting thing to, to kind of consider. You know, did, were they going for this whole serverless thing and they had to change because of World vs. World? Or are they were they set on servers the whole time? And uh, they're just trying to make it as seamless as possible. One thing I do find a little bit um, challenging is the whole idea of choosing a home server, and then that's where all your characters are, and that's all, the only characters you get. We're used to, I'm used to like World of Warcraft, or other, a lot of other games for that matter. You choose a server, and you kind of have your characters on it, right? And you can fill up the five slots or eight slots that they give you for characters, and then... You know, uh, but if you go to a different server, you get five slots again or eight slots again. And you can make other characters. And uh, the reason why that's kind of convenient is, uh, you know, my kids will make characters and stuff like that. You know, if my kids want to have, you know, I, I think you're allowed 50 characters in World of Warcraft, and I have all 50 characters built because I have my, like, two or three characters that I have played a, bu a bunch, but my kids just make tons of alts on the other server. So they're going to have to learn real quick that Guild Wars 2 doesn't quite work like that. And if we want all those characters, slots, daddy's going to need to get 5,000 jobs or something like that. So anyway, I just thought that that was interesting. I don't really, you know, again, this was a, a kind of spur of the moment topic. Do What do you guys think? Do you think that uh, Guild Wars 2 or, I mean, ArenaNet was going for a serverless uh, model in this and then World vs. World is what kind of stuck out as needing servers? Or do you think they were just, uh, you know, going for a server model the whole time? They just put a bunch of different uh, conveniences in to kind of streamline it and make it make the community feel bigger. So let me know what you think. Leave me a question or comment in the comments field below. And also, hit that like button, favorite my video, and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can be... Uh, notified when future videos are released. Uh, share this link with your friends so I can help grow my channel, and I appreciate all the subscribers that I have. I just hit 3,000 this week. 3,000 subscribers, that's amazing. I was at 300 last October, so uh, I, I thank my thanks, my heartfelt thanks, everyone who has supported my channel and helped me grow. All right, uh, that's going to wrap it up, and you can also contact me on Google+, Facebook, or Twitter, and Twitch. I'll put all that information on the screen and down below. Well, that's it for me, and have a good night. I've been working on beatboxing. You want to hear? All right, here we go. What do you think?